The state's largest school district moves to remote learning today. Denver Public Schools will join most of our other state's school districts by switching to online education. So teachers have set up classrooms in their dining rooms. Parents are left wondering if this would just be extra homework or full-on homeschool. Certainly stressful on a home. Denver 7 is committed to covering every angle of how remote learning is affecting millions of teachers, students, and parents. Our Nicole Brady goes 360 on the logistics and what it will take to make it work. How hard could it be to teach a kindergartner and a first grader? Well, day one of remote learning, I had a full inbox, daily assignment list with websites I've never heard of. I was panicked and I wasn't alone. At first, I'm not going to lie, the first week, him and I both had meltdowns. <laughs> I've now heard from dozens of parents, students, and teachers who are already weeks into this remote learning thing, and the perspectives vary widely. Parents who feel the expectations are too high, others who think the kids need this structure, students who are still learning the tech while missing out on the social aspect of school, and teachers who see both challenges and opportunities that could change education permanently. It was those teachers who jumped in first. Back on March 13th, the last day most kids in Colorado went to their school buildings. We made sure every go, everyone got their um, like iPads, their chargers, their we kind of prepared them for what was about to happen. In Jeffco, which is one to one for technology, they got devices, but fourth grade teacher Stephanie Hulting soon realized kids today aren't all as tech savvy as we think. I got whole emails with um, nothing in the message line and everything in the subject line saying, please help me, my words erased. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so now I have to teach them how to write an email before we can even, because they can't even ask me for help. Learning the tech has been one challenge and it varies by district and school. Some are using a host of different websites for assignments. Seriously, there are dozens. Google Classroom, Seesaw, iReady, Splash Math, Schoology. It goes on and on and on, making you wonder what happened to old fashioned paper. But some teachers say online learning is giving them new opportunities. We are learning so many different tools that we can use. We're like, why did we not know about this before? Seventh grade language arts teacher Nikki Brock says even in a class that's about reading and writing, tech can be incorporated. She started a virtual book club and is focused on keeping her kids connected. Honestly, the numbers aren't that different than in the normal school day. Like we have about 90% of our kids actively engaged right now in what we're doing. So do the students agree. I spoke to high school, middle and elementary age kids. They have their own personalities and learning styles, of course, some that adjust better to working at home. I do like having teachers like explaining stuff in class, but having it here, I can get it done at my own pace. If people need to take it slower than they can. But some say without being physically in the classroom, it's harder to communicate. They don't get the collaboration with other students and it's simply not school when you're at home. The main thing I miss is just going to school and having that separate place where my mind just shifts and differentiates away from home. For younger kids, the workload may be less right now, but many are confused, not sure what to make of this time. It doesn't feel like um, that I'm in school. It feels like that I'm in another place, but um, it feels like that I'm doing schoolwork. And with younger kids especially, parents are finding they have to help out more. That's hard for working parents. If they're working at home, they're distracted and forced to share space and internet bandwidth. If they're still going to an essential job, it's even harder. I work in a factory making medical supplies for uh, trauma and orthopedics, so it's essential. It, it, it's just difficult right now. You just do what you gotta do. And then there are the parents with special needs kids. First grader Jacob Bland is on the autism spectrum. His mom, Katie, says schools could make it easier by allowing independent study for the remaining school year. I've got all kinds of workbooks and all kinds of things to get them and keep them on track. And I think it would actually be easier to work with those materials versus cause I'm just not trained in what they're learning at school. Most parents said the schools have been supportive and flexible. You have to figure out what's gonna work best for you and your household. And if 
is reach out to the teachers if you need help. And parents are finding the silver linings, knowing eventually the kids will go back to regular school. I love having my kids home. I've never once been one of those parents that at the end of summer was like, I can't wait for my kids to go back to school. So while we all wait for the kids to go back to school, for teachers and students to reunite in person instead of on Zoom, Denver 7 will continue to bring you multiple perspectives on this new experiment in education. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Summer camps could be a whole other topic. Coming up on Thursday morning, Nicole has part two of her 360 report on remote learning, and she's focusing on the quality of education your kids are getting right now. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. How is your family adjusting to remote learning? You can email 360 at the Denver to share your thoughts.